Well, welcome to the uh, open source support Aquella briefing for Unicon um, for the first quarter of 2018. Uh, for our agenda today, we'll be covering some community news and activities related to Aquella. We will talk about our Aquella sustaining engineering efforts at Unicon. We'll have a community spotlight um, from NCCCS. Um, John is on the call to present there. Uh, we will have a 6.6 um, a demo. 6.6 uh, is not functioning complete yet, but we will demo some of the highlights. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about events, and then we'll leave time for Q&A um, for any questions that might come up. So for the presenters, uh, my name is Chris Beach. I am a software engineer here at Unicon and work with the um, open source support software of Aquella and um, uPortal. Uh, Benito, I'll go, let you introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Benito Gonzalez. I'm a senior software developer here at Unicon with uh, oh, probably uh, close to um, 12 years in open source development, uh, both with Unicon and a previous employer. I've been here for just over three years. Excellent. Thank you. All right, so we'll just jump right on in. Um, for some, the kind of the highlight of community news, Aquila 6.6 is nearing functionally complete. Uh, I believe the goal is to be the end of April, and then we will begin, uh, the community will begin testing. Um, and so, the, the companies that you know have that are working with Aquella, granted that Aquella is no longer owned by you know a specific company, um, it is part of the Aperio Foundation for open source. Um, but or and as such, that means that community testing is really critical to the success of these releases. So uh, the folks that are you know heavily engaged or you know focused on Aquella, uh, Unicon, Edelax. Um, and I believe it's next next ed in the UK. Um, you know, we will definitely be participating in the testing, um, but we also encourage the community involvement. Um, there's the full list of the GitHub issues that will be included in the 66 milestone. We will be sharing the uh, this slide deck, and so you'll have that link available. Uh, I wanted to touch on what the roadmap for Aquila is, and 66 is really starting to show that. Uh, responsive design is is the key, pretty much. Um, allowing um, allowing that you know, Aquella has a lot of functionality and a lot of cool functionality, but the the UI is dated. Um, it's it's very brittle when you try to um, <laughs> compress it down to a uh, to a mobile device um, and just different screen sizes. And so the responsive design has been heard as a, as a high need, high desire, and, um, and work is being started on that with the goal of being, you know, 100% responsive and 100% skinnable um, in the future. So you can, you know, we'll have all the REST APIs and then you can, you know, the front end can be coded pretty much however you want. If you have the wherewithal to, um, to reskin an application like that, not just with CSS and JavaScript, um, you know, snippets, but really, you know, get into it. You could completely skin Aquella. Um, and as part of that, you know, it wouldn't be required, but we are also um, driving to sunset the admin console and any other Java applications that a client would need. So really all you should need eventually for Aquella is to is to have a web browser. In terms of building Aquella, Aquella is um, is you know free to anyone to go ahead and build, to modify, to rebuild and however you want to do that. Um, companies like Edelax and Unicon can can assist you with that if you have an agreement with us, but you can also go out and do it yourself. Uh, you'll need Git, which is the version um, versioning system that we use since it's through GitHub. Uh, SBT, which is our is the build tool. It runs still on Java, and then we're including builders for the front end. Right now, it's um, using uh, PureScript, TypeScript, uh, React, Material UI, Componentry, um, and so you will need those various technologies available when you want to build a column. Um, 
due to that we have client applications kind of embedded in Aquila that you have to download and open up on your local system, you still need to have a Java signing certificate. Um, so it's, it's optional. The, the build system is set up to create a self-signed certificate if, you know, if you just want to do a demo, but if you're doing a, pre, a production level Aquila install um, and you're building it yourself, you're going to want to get a Java signing cert that's specific to your, um, to your group. And then choose the optional components such as Kaltura or um, the Oracle, Oracle database drivers. Uh, the, when Aquila was open source, most of the code was able to stay in the core platform. Um, there were a couple components, however, that were not able to just based on the licensing, but users of Aquila, adopters of Aquila are still free to, when they're building, to bring in those additional resources and build Aquila and it'll be like nothing ever was taken away. Um, and you don't need the optional components, as the name suggests, right? If you don't include the Kaltura uh, code, you just won't see um, that configuration or that option to add Kaltura items or Kaltura attachments to your items. All of the libraries are pulled down via SBT, so you don't need any other resources besides you know, what you have in on GitHub. And then it's really simple to build. You just do an SBT, compile, and then there's options, right? You can do an installer zip, an upgrade zip. You can run Aquella right from there. If you're doing development on Aquella, um, you know, there's options available, but if you're just building Aquella, installer zip is all, all you'll need. I hand it over to Benito for some Aperio news. Hi, folks. Um, so, Aquella was open sourced and it is, uh, has been adopted by the Aperio Foundation, which houses several open source uh, projects. Um, CAS for single sign on, uPortal, um, Sakai for learning uh, management. So, there's several other projects as well, and Aperio is, is now one of them. It's currently in the incubation process, and that is going very, very well. Uh, I'm involved with the incubation group on the Aperio side as a volunteer, and um, it looks like there's going to be a, a vote for it to already graduate from incubation coming up pretty soon, which is fantastic. The incubation process can last anywhere from a year to two and a half years on average. Uh, so. Aquella is just flying through, and we're looking uh, for an announcement hopefully in the next few months. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, in particular, the foundation was impressed by a lot of the work that was done, especially around uh, the governance process. And that's key. When um, an application is, is moved from a, you know, a private vendor company into a, an open source space, Sometimes there's a lot of contention on, well, who's now steering the boat? And that's what this governance model tries to capture. And that's um, several folks who've been involved in, in the companies that have already been mentioned. Unicon, of course, um, is, is one of them. And there's other people from uh, the higher ed space, uh, clients, and that's an important thing too, is having people like yourselves get involved with that process to help steer where the product will be going. So not just can you submit tickets and say, hey, you know, I'd really like help developing this feature at a broader sense and at the open source community level, if, you, if anyone's interested in getting involved, um, you can help steer the big ship, the, you know, the, the Equella project itself. Um, yep. All right. Next. Thank you, Benito. <laughs> All right, so for some sustaining engineering um, updates, since the Aquila, um, the open source support Aquila um, offering at Unicon is still relatively new, less than a year old, uh, I wanted to review what sustaining is and means um, for Unicon and for Unicon subscribers. So each, each time a Unicon subscriber um, for Aquella is, is onboarded, we're able to increase our ability to do sustaining engineering. Um, we, we want subscribers to help prioritize the sustaining engineering efforts. Um, 
And it really, the goal is just to help make Aquila better. Um, and and we we view the engagement of the community and how much that you know how much we should be adding to that effort um, by the number of subscribers that we are able to that you know that want to join in with Aquila or with with Unicon, and then as well as their their level of engagement when they have an issue and they're saying you know this would be really cool to have fixed um, and the efforts can range from you know there's a small little bug here that's really annoying me versus you know this is this is in, this issue is impacting users or this feature would be really nice to have and you know a lot of users would see it right it can range from it and it just depends on on the amount of uh, sustaining engineering hours we have available and you know, and the roadmap that we see going forward. So if we if we see a really big effort, but you know, it's it's a high priority, and our and the open source support clients um, are are really pushing for it. Then you know, maybe we will push those SE efforts together and and do a bigger chunk versus uh, you know several smaller things. In order to do that, if you're a subscriber, you can open a Unicon Zendesk ticket. Just put it as a, an S5 and go ahead and, and you know, begin the discussion that way. Uh, we, will, we will receive that, uh, open a GitHub issue, prioritize the request, and then let you know, when it's, you know what, um, what a Quella version it gets into. Um, really, though, anyone can add issues into the GitHub tracker. So while while Unicon goes through this model, so we can make sure that we're prioritizing the request, I don't want it to seem in any way, shape, or form that we somehow own that GitHub tracker, right? Edelax uses it, Unicon uses it. I know that some of our clients have already begun using it, and I would encourage um, adopters of Aquila to continue to, if they see an issue with Aquila. Um, feel free to work through Unicon, or if you want to open a GitHub tracker, or if you have a question. You know, feel free. It's it's a community tool at this point. So for sustaining engineering, what did we do in um, with the first quarter hours that we had available? There was a um, a, a small feature that was requested by one of our subscribers to expo expose the exist operator in the manage resources query. So we put that in, and then um, it was a it was a bit of a larger effort. So our you know the Number of our issues were less, but we were able to then um, help in a you know in a sizable way with the roadmap of Aquila, and that is creating a REST endpoint for reports. What that allowed us to do is you no longer need the admin console for reports with with the um, um, with the understanding that it's only the REST API for it right now. Um, as as we'll see in a little bit. 6.6's um, enhanced UI is is coming along nicely, and we are you know getting lessons learned from that, and kind of starting a prototype of how we want to handle a CRUD interfaces, right? How we want to do like manage reports or manage you know collections or whatnot. Uh, and so the UI for the reports are not in place, but the REST endpoints are. So you can create a you know a script on your computer if you wanted to push reports to a quell or whatnot you're able to do that now. Uh, like I mentioned before, we want to hear from you guys. Um, anyone that is a, uh, you know, an OSS subscriber to Unicon, please open a ticket. Or, and, and if you're not, but you want to dry, help drive Aquila and you know, the, um, the success that you can have with Aquila if things were changed, please open a GitHub ticket and you know, the community is reviewing those. Um, and just, uh, as as we've been working through these past few quarters, uh, subscribers have begun to identify bugs, and you know, so we note that as as priorities for them, and so they are driving the future priority of Unicon sustaining engineering efforts. I will hand it over to John for the community spotlight. Okay, can everybody hear me? I hope so. Yes. Uh, excellent. Uh, I am John Sweden, and um, I am from uh, North Carolina Community Colleges. Uh, we have been uh, running Aquala for, oh, I guess almost a decade now. Uh, we are um, 
currently running um, the last uh, um, vendor related version, so six, you know, three QA three, I believe, on a production instance. We're looking forward to uh, moving over to open source solution here very soon. Uh, but today, um, uh, I was going to show you uh, a um, a syllabus builder collection that we created some years ago for our um, colleges to use uh, to standardize their production of um, syllabus uh, for their online classes. So let me see if I can start this up here. Hopefully everybody should be uh, seeing um, our uh, repository now. Um, this is, um, I'm logged in as a, um, a faculty member of one of our schools um, who happens um, to be um, at a specific school uh, that we call Vance Granville. And what I'm going to show you is a little um, syllabus creator we put together that takes advantage of the wizard modules um, and the wizard items themselves to create a um, uniform syllabus for a variety of reasons, for really for um, to make students, uh, to let students see a standard look and feel when it comes to syllabus, uh, to, uh, to make uh, accreditation bodies happy. Um, and in essence, it can also let the administration of the, of the schools, whether that be K-12 or colleges or whatever, um, take a little bit more active role in standardization. So um, I'm just going to go, we just, we created a collection that, to do this. So you would just, the first thing you would do is just go ahead and click on contribute and I would click this uh, syllabus creator. Um, it's just, um, I've got it set up as four pages. Uh, first page is really just instructions that says, okay, here are the pages that comes forward and I got a little, little, um, uh, workflow diagram there to help the uh, faculty kind of understand all right, what am I going to be seeing on each one of these pages. So in essence, what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to use the wizard to um, complete the, a standardized set of information and some freeform information, and then at the end, Equella is going to create an HTML uh, page and a Word document based on those. Uh, based on the information that it's given and make it available, you know, as a standard um, resource uh, attachment uh, in, uh, in a specific item. Uh, even created a little step-by-step uh, -step instructions that uh, the faculty can click on if they want to have, um, get real deep into uh, how to use it uh, and, uh, you know, step-by-step -step instructions. So let's go ahead. Um, I wanted uh, DRM on this collection so that um, um, the faculty member could really track uh, who has accepted it uh, for their uh, analytics. You know, it would actually show through our, we, we really use a lot of learning management integration here in North Carolina, so I wanted to uh, uh, give them the, the analytics on who would uh, accept it. But I kind of limited it to say, okay, um, um, you, you, know, you can, Put as many if you have additional faculty members that type of thing will show up here i'm just going to leave that as myself for now um so this this page is this course information page is is, is pretty much the the, the, the meat of uh the uh, the first part of uh syllabi most of the time and it is where um the faculty can you know type in you know a good amount of information of course, you could always standardize some of this information just by using different drop downs or different items here. I'm just, I've got a, a, a document I'm going to pull some information from so that it makes it a little bit faster. Um, but, you know, course title, I'm going to say it's a, it's a biology course. I've got our, um, our course prefixes all set into Equella, so all I have to do is start to type and I can select. Uh, bio 100 from our prefix list. Um, we have some um, course sections in our online classes so that we can we can you know, put those in there as well. You know, academic year, let's call it 2019 or 2018. We'll call it for fall. Um, 
one of the, uh, we actually spoke with faculty and, and colleges uh, while we were making this, and one of the things that they wanted was, you know, well, let's make sure we have, you know, course start dates and dates um, available. Uh, prerequisites, you know, they said we really need prerequisites, so let's give a co-requisite and a prerequisite available here too. And of course, we've got a course description. So, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, you know, how, um, you know, other systems do, do it, but we have a comp combined course curriculum kind of library um, that we can pull descriptions from. Um, if you're a smaller school, of course, you could use a different uh, way to pull this course description, have all your course descriptions in, in, a, in a taxonomy so that they can, you know, just make sure that they've complete or they load ex exactly the right one you're looking for. Um, course delivery methods, just, you know, we have st different ones. And, and really what I thought was cool was uh, the ability to tie these um, uh, syllabi to uh, learning outcomes. So if you have a standard set of learning outcomes, um, we've got some set in there. Uh, if, I, if I start to type in bio, uh, it gives me uh, quite a few outcomes I can choose from. Uh, and I can just add it there and it adds it to that section. So what we've just did is we basically completed the top header um, information of our syllabi. Um, you know, the syllabus. So now I need to get in there and get some details that may not be, um, that is, is, is unique to each specific course. So what we've done here is we've created these um, sections. Um, we gave each section a title and then we gave um, the um, uh, HTML editor for details around that section. So, you know, a, a, a obvious, a good uh, a section to put in here would be something like, you know, course policies. I've used it before, so it gives a little drop down. And you would say, okay, well, what is our course policies? Um, and I'm gonna throw something in here. It, it handles HTML, no problem. Um, and, and, and it, you know, even handles pretty much any uh, item, that, uh, any image you put in here, as long as it's loaded to Aquila, it'll, it'll work out. So I've got one in here. I've got one section title, but obviously my syllabus is more than one section. Uh, we've used the repeater uh, in the wizard to add a new section. So I add a new section, and most uh, syllabus have a maybe a grading and evaluation section. And let's give them a scale for that. Okay. Well, let's let's make that scale a little bit easier to read. Okay. And um, let's give them one more just to show. Maybe if you wanted to actually go in there and put in a, you know, a week. Uh, schedule or something like that. Of course, uh, you could do that by by just if you want if you had it somewhere already else. Of course, you could copy and paste it, um, or you can even put in a um, a uh, table. So week one, week two, uh, and all that will um, transfer over. Make your edits. Anything that the HTML editor will handle uh, should be um, completely fine. Now, if you say, well, well, well I want actually my, um, my uh, work schedule, my week schedule uh, above my uh, evaluation and grading, all you have to do is set that and it moves it up, um, up. So it jumps, you can change your order, or of course you can, of course, delete each section as you go. Uh, so that's that's about it and as far as uh, getting information um, in that uh, we need to get in. So the only thing that we would need to go ahead and do now is hit that save button. It says, do you want to submit it for moderation? So what I've done on here is uh, to take control of the um, uh, actual 
process, you can put a workflow on it so that you could submit this to your, you know, department chair or your, um, you know, curriculum coordinator um, on anything that you'd need. But let's go ahead and just save it as a draft. And there we go. So, <coughs> excuse me, as you can tell, we've uh, created an item here, Introduction to Bi Biological Statistics. Here's a description. We've got some metadata showing here. Um, we've got uh, some um, uh, outcomes showing here. But students are not going to see this. Students would actually see uh, the actual syllabus. So here's the syllabus that we've created off of that. We can uh, put in code to put its own um, uh, logo at the top, we give it a general syllabus kind of outline. Here's all that header information that we filled out. But also here are the sections. And each section has actually been um, tagged as an anchor, so you could jump right down to it. If you wanted to see, and of course you could add this directly into your um, a learning management system just like you would any other uh, item and if you had multiple sections you could come into equella update that syllabus and of course it's updated wherever you link it so if you want to see the word it downloads the word doc it's going to come over it's going to open up word for me there we go and here we go so pretty much exactly what you'd see if it was on the online version. Um, so how that works behind the scenes, um, separate, some coding in there uh, that um, in essence takes what the output from the XML and, and uses and throws some word um, code around it uh, with some save scripts. I think I can show you that real fast. So here's that, here's that syllabus creator, and right here, um, we've got some code that goes through, and it's a series of basically loops that goes in, and uh, we define some variables. And it's a series of loops that goes in and um, you know finds the information, puts it in it, uh, and we put some divs in there to handle the formatting on the page. Uh, and we've kind of just played with it till we got it to um, you know, look the way that we wanted. So I think I'm about out of time. So we'll go ahead and we can take some you know questions um, a little bit later or through the uh, through the chat um, when you like. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's pretty cool that you guys were able to build out a word and a PDF based on the the metadata there. All right, can folks see my screen again? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so we'll go into the to the six six demo here just as a kind of a again a reminder. Six six is it's the first round of enhanced UI, responsive UI for Aquella. Um, we're doing so by you know well, we're enabling a a complete UI refresh by um, by building out more REST APIs and enhancing the existing ones, and then of course bug fixes are here as well. So let me nope. I'll type on a demo. All right, so this is running the latest 6.6 code. As you can see, it looks pretty much exactly the same as 6.5. You go into settings, give it a chance to warm up. And we'll notice now that the UI looks a little bit different. And this is the settings page is now being generated off of a new uh, REST API endpoint that I'll show you in just a minute. But in order to go to the new UI, you open, you expand the UI section, click Enable UI, 
refresh. And here we are. So this, this wrapper around the various Aquila components is responsive. And so if we want to make it smaller, come on. There we go. If we want to make it smaller, then the menu on the right hand side is going to open up. Right, and you'll be able to see all of your your standard options here. To show how this is powered with the REST APIs, just briefly we will show the endpoints that were created. Sorry, it's taking a couple seconds there. All right. So if we scroll down to settings, that is not what I was hoping to find. There we are. We've created, uh, we as the community, when I'm talking about this, it's, it's as the community, has created these, um, these three endpoints to allow that settings page to work. So as 6.6 is developed and as future versions of the Qual are developed, um, these REST APIs will continue to um, be more, more and more rich um, and eventually be able to access any functionality of a Qual is is the goal. The, the, just incidentally, the part that we worked on, if you looked at the sustaining engineering, so the part, one of the parts that, a, um, a Unicon helped with was building out this report management REST API endpoint, and it should allow you to do pretty much whatever, whatever you need to for report management. It doesn't actually execute the report. You still go through the normal flow for that. So, all right, so we'll switch back here. So the REST APIs are driving the enhanced UP, the enhanced API, um, and we the if you go into say like a contribute, you'll see that it looks fairly similar, right? And so the wrapper for Aquella has been changed to to allow it to be responsive. But the, the the various sections inside of Aquila have not been completely moved over yet. Right, the contribution wizard is going to have you know quite a bit of effort to move that over, even though that is you know of course in the in the pipeline, the roadmap, um, but it is not set up for six six. The the main area that was developed was this search. Uh, it just started up Aquila before this, so it's it's waking up for all the different functionality. All right. And actually, this is interesting. Because in the... Is this going to work? Nope. So when I was preparing for this demo and getting ready for it, when you go into search, it actually showed something completely different. And so there's a caching issue going on because this is not the real search, what you're supposed to do. Let me jump back to the, um, to the screenshots. So the new UI, we'll have to look at why that caching issue happened. The new UI gives a you know a search field, and you have um, you know this is starting to be built out. This is how you know how you how you're going to um, 
identify you know at a, ver a better level than just your keyword search and then you will have the search results in the middle um, and then you know your normal keyword search is fine you're then the the one feature that's been built out so far in the search is to oh you know what that's what it is hold on let me switch back just just for fun I forgot to enable the new search UI. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, all right. So we can search for things here by keyword, like I was saying, resources modified, right? Last day or week, and it'll just update automatically. And then there's this new feature, there's a search facet. And so let's say we wanted to sort, um, it, it's keys off of metadata, right? So for this one, we'll do metadata types type, go into search, and it shows up here, it's already counted, what items fit that criteria, and then when you uh, click on it, and you can do multiple, you know, facet and multiple facets or f values of that facet, and then just kind of like tagging works. You can just click an X on it, and it'll it'll remove it for you. So responsive, it's tied in. It's a single page web app inside of of the search functionality. Right, so um, a lot, a lot cleaner, a lot more flexible than it was in um, in six five and previously. So, um, it's not functionally complete yet, um, but those are the main areas that I wanted to hit in the demo. So I will jump back. Yep. Okay, and I'll go ahead and pass it back to Benito. Hi, right, thanks, Chris. Um, so I'd like to talk about uh, the Open to Perio 2018 conference in Montreal. Next slide. So it is on those dates, June 3rd through the 7th in Montreal, Quebec. Um, Early Bird is ending next week, and you can go to that link to see what the program is about. Um, if you go to the next slide, Chris, I think, do you have all the Equala sessions listed? Right, so um, Aperio has an annual conference and, and this is that conference where we, uh, Aperio highlights a lot of the projects, uh, tries to bring in developers and people in the communities to present. Um, it's not just about developers talking about technology. There are usually uh, use cases where um, people who are actually implementing open source projects like Equella talk about what they've done, how they've overcome hurdles, and added additional content or extended things, just as we saw in the community spotlight. Uh, so there is a couple of sessions that would be great to attend if you're really interested in Aquila. But the, the best part about the conferences that I've seen is that you really get to get involved with the community and with the developers, the people who are the movers and shakers in the project. This is a chance where outside of presentations, you sit and have lunch, go out to dinner with uh, folks in your community with Aquila, and really get to know what's going on. It's easier to express issues and bubble those things up with other people um, kind of get a feel for what's going on and how uh, the projects are driven and managed uh, and you really feel more connected to the community so um, I, I'd really uh, like to impress that if you have the option to attend the, the conference it would be an excellent way to just really embrace Equella and, and kind of make it um, uh, more than just a product, uh, but something you can get involved with, and um, just it, it, it's a great way to influence how things are moving forward. Um, 
so that's the key. There's an early bird special that's uh, going to be wrapping up next week. Just to remind you, if you go back to the previous slide, Chris. That's the URL. Um, go ahead and, and if you get a chance and you're interested, uh, follow that link. Uh, read some of the, the pages there. The keynotes are up. I think uh, one may be missing. I think there's another keynote that will be added soon. The schedule's there. The venue, you know, beautiful Montreal, Quebec. But again, the key is not just attending those sessions, but talking to people about the issues and, uh, you know, just talking about Equella. So we hope to see you there. Chris is going to be there, so you get to talk to him. Uh, I'm excited to uh, to spend a little time with Chris since we work remotely. So can't say enough. All right, thank you. All right, uh, in kind of wrapping up the briefing, I wanted to talk a bit about communication. Uh, we need to continue to grow the Aquila community. Uh, there are various uh, vehicles that we have set up to do this and if if the community can identify another vehicle that would be useful um, let's let's pose that to the community and so we can continue to drive forth because the goal is just to make Quella better than it was before and more useful for you know for our groups uh, currently what we have is the Aperio Aquella website Aperio like Benito was talking about it's um, it, it technically owns Aquella, it watches it, um, and it, it just makes sure that processes are handled appropriately. Um, so there's also Google Groups um, off of the Aperio um, account, Aquella Dev, and then Aquella Users. And it's, it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you want to, you know, feel free to subscribe to both. Uh, if you're just interested in more of the, um, you know, the end user chatter, the, then it's the Quella users, otherwise the dev stuff will be a little more technical. Um, there's a Slack channel for Aquella. Uh, like earlier mentioned, um, there's the, since Aquella is hosted in GitHub, the issue tracker that is inside of GitHub is used to identify the tickets and tie in the pull requests uh, to the features that are going into Aquella. And then there's also a Twitter account um, if you want to follow that and get late, the latest updates. And so for the next steps, um, the recorded session um, and the blog post will be available soon on our site, and the sites are below. I believe there is an issue with recording the session, uh, so we, we might have only gotten part of it, um, but I will follow up and see what we can salvage from there. Um, wanted to, you know, yeah ask you guys to help with testing um, Aquella, because really, Aquella is now everyone's, um, and we, we all want to see it successful. Um, so if you, when, when the announcements come out that 6.6 is ready to start testing, um, I would encourage you to test your critical flows against Aquella, right? You don't, I, I, I would question if you would be testing, you know, you know, in Blackboard components if you were only using Canvas, right? I mean, you're more than welcome to, but what we want to make sure is that when you um, when you get when six six is ready to be used in production, that you are ha you have a level of confidence that this is this is something you want to go for. It's going to help you out. Um, consider attending the Open Aperio conference this year. Um, I'm I'm excited to go there and to talk about Aquella and also to learn about other open source offerings. Um, Please feel free to contact Unicon if you have any questions on our Aquila offerings and and be active in the communication channels, right? I mean, Aquila, the Aquila community is only going to be as good as the folks on this call um, and other calls like this make it, really. Um, and we have, we have a, a, a worldwide community, so uh, we, we have a lot of potential here. And with that, we'll just open it up for any questions that folks may have. Hey Chris, this is John. Um, I had a question if uh, on the new um, UI, uh, was there, is there any, any limitations as far as um, layout space that uh, has been like can taken under consideration, like anything that we should know of, like, 
you know, uh, the, the description field is now only you know, 100 characters versus 250 or that type of thing. Right. I am not aware of any of those uh, limitations as of yet. The goal is, um, is to make this more flexible, not, you know, uh, not more strict. Um, but as, as the prototype is being shaken out, we'll definitely keep those in mind and, um, and make those aware on the community sites. Cool. cool. And, and uh, one follow-up, can you add as many facets um, as you'd like, or is it just a one for now? No, you can add, yeah, you can add multiple. Okay, cool. Wonderful. All right. Any other questions out there? All right. Well, with that, we'll call it a wrap. I appreciate you guys joining us for this briefing and for the participation, and we look forward to hearing you online.